when running any team, whether it's Real Madrid or Man United or the local under sevens team, communication is absolutely vital. Making players feel special, making them feel part of the, the jigsaw and making them feel appreciated is one of the most important parts of any style of management. Originally, I was questioned over why we were recruiting um, a couple of weeks ago when we put that message out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. that we were recruiting. Jordan, Jason, Dowdy, a couple of the more senior players asked me, you know, why are we recruiting? We've got nearly 40 members of the WhatsApp group and it doesn't take long before you start breaking it down to say that the likes of Curly, he's been injured most of the season. Gary and Adam between them, they get injured most of the season. Uh, we've been chopping and changing between two goalkeepers, so that doesn't give us a huge option in terms of that number. And there's a good 10, 11 players in that group that are great lads, really good lads to be around and to hang around with, but just aren't available on Sundays. So before you know it, the 38 members of the WhatsApp group turns out to be a regular sort of 20 to choose from, of which one or two are less available, so they might only make half the season. And before you know that, <clears throat> we're picking from the same 15 or 16 lads every week. Now, injury starts to affect that this time of season, so we need new lads in. The big picture is ultimately that we need people to be coming in and we need people to look beyond the next 10 games and to next season and who's going to be more available because we've got two lads having babies this season with their, their partners, another couple of lads pregnant or planning to get pregnant. Those things don't make life easier. And as we all get a year older, things like this turning up week in and week out do get more difficult. So I've put my foot down and said, that's it, we're recruiting. This couple of weeks, we've seen responses to that. <clears throat> next jobs, get them down, try and see them at training. And try and get them involved into the group and see how they go from there. <clears throat> As always, some of them will not be great and some of them will turn out fantastic and we'll have to see how it goes. We'll see. After another loss in the league, it might be a good time to mention that it's the month of March, which means the league's quote-unquote transfer window is open and as Ryan pointed out, the boys are dropping like flies. So we met up with new signing Dan Tate, the D's first signing of the window. However, when we pitched this idea to him, he was quick to mention that he's actually re-signing. So we sat down with him and Ryan anyway to discuss his re-signing and all other things Sunday League. Well, honestly, um, main reason is because I heard a little rumour Sam Russell was playing quite well this year. And um, we all know that can't be true. So I thought I had to come find out for myself. Uh, turns out... <laughs> Especially after last week's performance. I hope you had that footage in Sam doing his little run back. Um, but no, in seriousness, um, you know, it was I've played here for years, uh, was out for three years, all right. Um, obviously after two knee surgeries after my first one and then it was just couldn't wait to get back into it, even though I probably did a dowdy for about a year and said I was gonna retire. But <laughs> You know, you end up kidding yourself, don't you? You want to get back into it, so uh, that's why. Yeah. But I, I don't think it can be replicated. So, Sunday League, what made you pick Sunday League? Because uh, you could play Saturdays, you could play Vets, yeah. with a different uh, team. It's a charm of Sunday, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's, you know, we, we all could play a little bit more to what I did for many, many years, play a lot more serious football. But, the Sunday, nice early in the morning, get it done with your mates. Um, it's, it's you know you're playing poorer facilities. I know it's not ideal at times, but it adds a charm to it. So I kind of enjoy that. Um, and there's something about Sunday morning which is just better than any other day. So yeah, it's the main reason really. It's just having some plays are just a bit more just much more, much funnier. So. And you're getting the band back together, the Bears, Paul boys. You and uh, Sam, Jake, Stalby, all together again. Yeah, that, that's the main one really for me. Like obviously, I played with these for God, like over ten years, and that old. Um, and it's always the same. Um, when we get together, it's a laugh. Um, you know, to piss out of each other constantly. Um, you know, it's 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 good. Do you know what I mean? That's the that's a, that's a charm. I go back to it. It's a charm. You some days you need to turn up with your mates, having a laugh, win win together, draw, lose, whatever. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't matter. You can you can have a pint or a joke about something or you know stuff like that. So uh, and you, 
you get different players all the time. Like I said to you when I first came back, um, it, there was a lot of different players than there was before. But when you've still got the same old usual players, it's better. Kind of, so just turning up and seeing the whole new team. Um, you know, the lads who, who stay the whole ten years or whatever the club just keeps it running. So, um, <laughs> like, you, you know, even forget about like just Sam, me, and Dowd and Jason, people like that. You know, even like George when I first came here, he's still there. Obviously, you know, you've got uh, uh, some people like that that have played for quite a few years now. Even uh, before I got injured, I was doing five, six, five side and stuff like that as well. So, so yeah. So, uh, that's, you know, like I say, seeing familiar faces is, is much more enjoyable than the tournament on Saturday. You know, those lads are taking far too seriously. You know, and it's a different team every week. So, my aim on a Sunday is to provide that sort of longevity and that opportunity. If you sign for me, as, as I said to Jason when he signed, if you sign for me, you will still have a team in five years. Plenty of examples of teams that a couple of those players played for. Come win a cup with fold, come win the league with fold, playing for a different team every other year. <coughs> D Rangers approaching 41 seasons consecutively. It's a bit different, isn't it? At this level. Yeah, it is. I mean, that, to be honest, as you know from the start, Sam brought us over to D Rangers because I think it was across the road from his house. He knew about it and we just we played here a few times. Obviously, we went for the best sport and stuff like that. Um, and you can tell from the start, you know, you you ran the club well. Um, you had every lad's interest, you know, at heart every single time of the season. Obviously, everybody wants to win stuff. So, but it, as you say, if you're going to fall, it's a point. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's one trophy and then that's it. You've done. You put it on your on the piece and away you go. You're not playing football again or you're with a different lads or whatever. You know, turning up week on week, year on year is for me the, the, the beauty of it. You know, we can all sit there with loads of trophies and that on our shelves and all that kind of thing. But if it's not, if it's not turning up every week and you're not seeing the same lads, it's not the same, is it? Do you know what I mean? So, well, that, last season, obviously, you missed it through injury, but the lads went on. They won the cup. This season, we're approaching the semi-final. Same competition, opportunity to retain the cup. I've said from the beginning, winning something with this group of lads way that's been brought together. The team that you were brought into six, seven years ago was awful. Some of the players were awful, we were bottom of the league. Yeah. But I think that being around and the organic growth of bringing in players and people's mates, lads who maybe could play at a higher level, coming in because of the social aspect of the group and sticking around because it's a good place to be and a good environment to be in. The council rewarding us by giving us the best facilities in the league. Do you think Winning this trophy with this club could mean more when you're surrounded by your mates. Oh, 100%, yeah. Of course it is, yeah. Like I say, you know, from all you've achieved as a club, but then to do it with your mates as well, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's basically a double whammy, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? You can, like I say, you could go move to a team that's got hand picked best players, and you could say, all right, I could go, you know, but like I say, you, it's, again, it's just a medal with a load of randomness. Doing it with your mates and lads who just Draft in year on year, go through the same old crap, you know, facility buys and chasing uh, sponsorship and all that kind of thing. You know, you can't, that's that's a big achievement, that is, that is the biggest achievement, being able to win something with, you know, with all the work you've done and all the effort you've put into it. Definitely, I would say yeah, it's, it's much better. And I think D Rangers, you know, they do not best, don't they? Go, I mean, I think they're you not know, all teams. I mean, there's a couple of others that have been around a long time where you've turned stuff like that, but. You know, you guys put much more of a conscious effort in to, to well, include and do stuff like this. So, uh, you know. so, I think over the last 12 years of me playing and running the club, there's been a, a shift in the way people sort of look at Sunday League. It still has a reputation for being like blood and thunder and horrible tackles and. I personally think when you actually play, that doesn't exist. But when you speak to people who don't play, that that's their one thing about Sunday League it, is that it's, it's it's crippling tackles and can't do that because I've got work in the morning and stuff. And what would you say about getting involved? What can we do to maybe put that to bed? Well, probably not the worst person you can ask God, for that one because. <laughs> Because you're renowned for your last, tackle. Yeah, well, no, because <laughs> my last the last game for you in you know three years ago when I got injured was because the tackle was in, you know on my standing leg. Yeah. Um, so they do happen. I wouldn't say 
they happen all the time and it's it's not as common as everybody makes out it is. Um, you know, players get injured, do you know what I mean? I've, I've been injured the first time I got injured, which was the, ultimately the first time I did my ACL, that was on a Saturday anyway. And then, I mean, although it happened again on a Sunday, that could have just been a reoccurrence of where and tear, then probably it would happen on a Sunday, it could have easily happened on a Saturday, do you know what I mean? Um, well, no, I agree with you. I think ultimately it isn't, is it? It's not It's not full on two foot challenges and stuff like that. Any more than a Saturday is. Yeah. You know, you probably get less on a Sunday than you do on a Saturday because lads take it too seriously. Yeah. Um, I say too seriously, I mean, obviously, that's what we're out for, aren't we? Out to win things and do whatever. But, um, I don't know, yeah. I think Saturday, the, the lads go out there, they, they're taking it more seriously. It's a Saturday afternoon. They, you know, they know ultimately that it's, it's not always with the mates and they're trying to achieve something like West Cheshire, do whatever it is. Then you're going to get those harsher but competitive tough tackles. That's in my experience is what you got on uh, Sunday. <coughs> not so much, um, other than when I got <laughs> Yeah. So that's the reputation of Sunday League, being in it, being back in it, week in, week out. What can the league or the FA or county FA or whatever, what can they do to improve engagement with the league? You know, we've seen this season the league stepped onto social media for the first time. I don't think it's aided by the only people willing to volunteer to run the league are retired players and managers who are obviously at a certain point in their age. Um, but what can they do? There must be something they can change to improve player engagement, manager engagement, retention of people staying in the game? It's a tough question. Um, I think my, my personal opinion straight away goes to facilities, straight away. Um, because, well, as you know, if a pitch is crap and um, they don't look after grasses and cuts and stuff like that, then that automatically ruins the fun of the game. Because you, know I mean? you can't you can't even perform to any sort of level. You, know I mean? you go for every single piece like this where you've got you know free jig goes away from really nicely. Um, and then you go on a Sunday and you play with potholes and grass hasn't been cut, do you know what I mean? And as I said before, when you can't head the ball like me and you're relying on your feet or foot and really gonna run for uh, then uh, you know you you want the bitches to be more the you know any all the facilities to be half decent. All the pitches and anything else. Do you know what I mean? I don't think most lads really give one about getting, you know, changed and side of the pitch or, you know, not having a shower until they get home or something like that. But the pitches, they, they, they should be better than they are, you know, whether the drains, more games on, you know. Uh, I think ultimately, my biggest thing is, like, this type of football as well, it's the time of year we play. Yeah. I always think that we've got crap facilities, crap pitches. So then, why would you, why would you play the Sunday leagues and Saturday leagues during the you know winter months one play in the summer months yeah. because you're going to get lads who drop out you know on uh, a Saturday or season ticket so right. that you've got a midweek game for the Champions League you know what I mean and then you're going to lose players from that perspective and then you're going to lose weekends when pitches are frozen and you know they're soaking wet or something like that so why not move the season a little bit so we can actually get some of the summer months on, the, on a decent grass or using the or facilities like these 3Gs and stuff like that. Mm. But yeah, so it's a difficult one because participation in football, as we know with the generations, is changing, but uh, I think that would help massively. And last one, one overriding positive memory involved in preferably the Rangers, but Sunday League in, in general. Um, going back to one of my first memories, um, when I was with, obviously because I've been injured a couple of times, with Bears Ball, um, we've been uh, in a final, I think it was Sam, Sam Russell's birthday, we stood on the sideline with his dad, and uh, he scored a header, and the referee brought it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, never, I've never been so happy in my life, it's brilliant. Um, 
Yeah, he was good as well. Um, I don't remember we went on to win that, but uh, I remember that. I think I think we did actually. I think we won it, yeah. And afterwards, I think in the well, Daddy assures me that it was the uh, round of 16, but I reckon it was a quarter so myself. Yeah. I scored the winning penalty to get us through, and then it's obviously I was there at the final supporting the lads, um, and I got a trophy at the end of the year. And I was there with my top on and a badge, yeah. and they all started calling me John Terry. <laughs> and I was like, you know. But isn't, isn't that more to your earlier point that your memory isn't just about winning? Oh, no, exactly, yeah. That's yeah. it, yeah. It's um, not, and I love with, that. You know, with the, with the Rangers as well, um, first season you mentioned, I always remember the first trading session we had, which was up there. Oh, what's it? Yeah, yeah. I would. Like, what's that? Yeah, and as you were talking about the quality of players, and me and Sam turned up there. We just looked at each other, thinking, you know, we could pass a ball, and you know, it looked like we were running rings around them, like you know, it was Messi and I was Ronaldo, and clearly we're not. So yeah. it just goes to show. But there was something about the club that you just sort of kind of think, well, you know, you've you run it well, and it's worth coming back. And then obviously we've got a few lads in, and we've got better players, and, and then we went on. And, Last year, so it just goes to show when it goes, don't it? We've got a good group of lads as well, and that's, that's what's key about it. So, but it's been stop starting to join Janet. So, I've yeah. um, had a few good seasons, but then, you know, I think probably when I was getting more into it, that's when I got injured. So, uh, and then that's it, you've got to remove yourself from the group then for me because it kills me to not turn up every weekend to watch all the lads. You know? So, how old are you now? 36. Another cup on the horizon. Can we do it? Yeah. I hope so, yeah. I think, you know, like I said earlier, like, you know, I, I kind of wanted to give it up and, you know, after three knee surgeries, you're just like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, it happens again, it, like, you know, it kills you, but it's, it's too hard to give up, you know, it's too hard to, because, you, you know, you're, you're a long time can't play, do you know what I mean? So, it's, you just got to be sensible with it, you know. Um, I reckon I've got a few more years in me, as you've said a few times to me, I'm one of the lads who goes to the gym, looks after myself, so... And uh, I've been back about now, about two months. Yeah. And um, so far, every game of the started me, which I can't <laughs> believe. Uh, you know, um, but I suppose that goes to show, like, you look after yourself, you can carry on playing, can't you? So, like Jay said, I think me and him are going to be there until about 52, trying to play. Yeah. <laughs> they don't bring at 52, but we'll give it a go. Well, Dali's still going at 40, so. I don't know, yeah. Yeah, know. if he plays in goal, that don't count. Yeah, but I don't think he's ever seen a gym. <laughs> No, he hasn't, no. <laughs> but to be fair, he's been the same way since he's about 18. Yes. Yeah. All in all, welcome back, mate. It's good to have you back. Cheers, we appreciate it. With Dan resigned, so far the month of March has definitely been an unpredictable one, mostly because of the snow. And it's fair to say, with Section A being a struggle still, they're not the only ones taking the battering, as the pitches are too. So, the boys once again turn their attention to the cup competitions, this time the Bill Gresty Cup as they face fellow Section A side, Jackswood, who are currently challenging for the title, but whoever wins today progresses through to the semis. So, can the boys get another semi on on a chilly March morning in the port? <laughs> like we mentioned, it's quite chilly, which means the lads are doing their best to keep warm, or at least look like they are anyway. Although new signing Carl has arrived, and it's fair to say he's attracted some attention already. <laughs> White boots and tights aside, let's hear what Ryan has to say to inspire the lads to another semi. I'm in I can finally show yeah. Daddy what the formation is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy's been playing the same formation for three weeks. I've got a fucking clue what it is. <laughs> That's just right. Play centre back. right, boys, first up. Um, the referee has just turned up and he's obviously doing a pitch inspection. I've noticed a couple of people worried about it. I would imagine at this stage, at 5 to 11, it's going to pass the pitch inspection, to be honest. Um, I think personally that'll suit us. We know, we know these are top of the league, we know they want to get the ball down. So I think it could suit us for the ball holding up a little bit, getting stuck in puddles, making it ugly. It might suit us, you never know. Um, today's obviously a cup quarter final, so there will be a winner. Okay, let's try and get it done in the 90. Let's try and do our job, play our football, work for each other on and off the ball, communicate for each other, and make sure we enjoy it. There's not many games left this season. Let's go out there and enjoy ourselves as best we can, okay? Playing today, Daldi's obviously in goal. 
Back three, Jordan, Sam and Jason. Oh. Midfield five, Pez, Max, Dan Tate, Liam and Craig. And up front, the twins, <laughs> oh. okay? <coughs> Pez, uh, where's Pez gone? Pez has got a job to do to organise those two wings in the midfield. Excellent. Other than that, boys, go and enjoy yourselves, get the ball down and play. Let's go. Everyone's dead keen. If a slip, edit. Direct to money. So, here we go. We start the action with Jackswood as they come forward with a lovely ball down the line. This sets Jason off in a foot race and also a battle for strength. This is a professional boxer and as ideas go, it's probably not the best of them. Big fan of that. <laughs> I know what I'll do. I'll try and out muscle this professional athlete. That'll be, that'll be solid. To spare Rocky's blushes, however, nothing comes from the corner, and Jackswood are in possession once again. But a good tackle from Pez wins the ball back, and after a lovely passing move and a fortunate deflection off Max, it gives Gaz a chance 1v1 with the keeper. Good save, keeper. Strike it off, Max. What are you playing at? After a good save from the keeper, a poor touch from Max means Jacks would chop it clear. But the D have definitely started strong here. However, two saves this time stopped the D from being 1-0 up. Most notably, the number 17 throwing himself in front of Max's shot. To be honest, he's a braver man than I am. Stingers aside, Gaz has sent his latest effort to Hull, so a new ball is needed. But first, it needs to be pumped up. While Adam kindly lets the Jackswood lads know that one's on its way, the number 17 is feeling the effects of his earlier block, so he uses that time to have a quick team talk. And failing to rally the troops, however, he quickly gets up. Speaking of the number 17 once again, he's firmly in the thick of it. After winning a foul in a promising position, it turns out he fancies an adventure. I'm not sure what he's planning. After his adventure, the number 17 takes the free kick, which hits Pez. However, Jax would do well to keep the ball and recycle it back over to the left hand side for the number 17 to cross again. <laughs> After a strong start, however, Jacks would have come back into this game swinging, and here they are with a corner once again. Come on, boys! Hey, that's soft, that is, and we know it! We've got to lift it! Ah, after swinging the corner back post, Jacks would now lead 1 0. Not quite the start the boys could have made. Although, almost an instant reply brings us level. However, the Jackswood keeper pulls off another close range save. Hold the phone, however, Jackswood had the ball wide once again. And just like that, it's 2-0 to Jackswood. Oh. Hey, that was too easy. We know we're better than this. 
After going 2-0 down, it's definitely giving the D's semi hopes some problems. However, there's still plenty of time in this game, but the ball is back down the other end again after a lovely diag to the wings. It gives Jason another sparring match to contend with, but let's see how he gets on this time. Ah, well after playing a 1-2 with his face, it's fair to say Jason is having a tough session. Thankfully, however, the ball is back up the other end this time, with a corner, but can the D make the corner count? Agonisingly, the ball somehow stays out once again, and that brings an end to a frustrating first half. Right boys, first up, I think you've all come off saying the same things. Oh, we're, not take, we're not taking our chances. We should, we should be leading this game. Ignore the fact that we can see the ball. The, the keeper's come out, spread himself. We just hit it straight at him twice, at least twice. The chances go flying over and flying wide. We've had more chances than them. And I, I think that's pretty obvious. And they did not like it at 0 0. They didn't fancy it at 0 0 at all because they knew we were dominating. They knew we were taking possession. As soon as they give them that breakthrough, a free header at the back post. As soon as you give them that opportunity, they were absolutely made up. And they knew they had a foothold then. And we more, get a goal, more, lads. More, they they have to in the, in the halfway area. area. No. And allow them to drive two, on. Two, it's more dangerous for us to foul them. No. And then we just stand back. Oh, I can't foul him here. He's in the box. Can't and he's slotting up one in. Should have fouled him up here. Simple as that. Yeah. Oh, lads. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. We've, See, got two, we've batted him. We've done yeah. very, very well. It's coming at him. We've done well. Don't get involved in silly little fouls now. Play your game, let them make the fouls. Yeah? All you've got to do, all he does is try and foul you every time. Let the ref deal with him. Is this number 17? Is this number 17 that you keep telling Pez to mark and shouting, oh, 11? Pez is like, what? We wanted it more, and then as they took the lead, not only have we started playing within ourselves, we started getting quieter, we're not shouting for the ball, not wanting the ball. Players aren't commanding, demanding, like, give me the fucking ball, let me deal with this. I don't know. Well, you have it. Yeah, we know we can go along with the guys and that, don't we? But the thing is, we can't always do that. You've got to sometimes go in the gaps as well, haven't you? You know, they can win every fucking head that they have. We need to Sometimes as well, we're taking too long with the ball. Let's pass it, he's a throw in. As soon as you see the lack of space, let's hit him. Yeah, give it to his chest or put it to his feet. Let's not just wait and wait and wait and do the same. Three or four times has been shouted to throw into early to pairs or to max or anything like that. And we've just done that. Yeah, just play yeah, the first time. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> and then we're just doing the same thing. Yeah. All you've got to do in that second half is go out and believe in yourself. You are good footballers. Get the ball down and play your game. Don't get drawn into playing their game. It's 20, 25 minutes. You're a better team. Let's go out there and do it again. Come on. Maybe Dan Tate will get some mud on him at some point. You never know. Just need me boots. What I'm going to do in a beer is going to go for a diving header and just slide across the water. Yeah. You wrote, you I'm dive, really it. you dive, you header, don't go for the same sentence. <laughs> far, more chance, <laughs> far more chance with the cleanser than there is the header. Don't win every single team, do we? With the emergence of action, Dan, we only went and missed kickoff. Again. But obviously, we're back underway. And after a frustrating first half, it's important the boys start well and potentially grab an early goal. Ah, or concede an early goal instead. Back to the action, however, we're not quite sure how the ref has managed to give the foul on Max the other way, but it's safe to say this game definitely hasn't lost its competitive edge, 
despite the scoreline. Oh, this one. Good, good. Oh, we're not quite sure how to describe that, but it's definitely the number 17's world, and we're just living in it. Apart from it being the number 17 show, there's one man who's determined to seal the spotlight today, and that man is. Oh, hello. Oh. <laughs> Some say that. Of course, it's the Jackswood keeper. This time, he tips the deflection over the bar. However, another corner gives the D chance to pile more pressure on and hopefully grab a goal. If the Jacks would keep a let's them anyway. Sadly, they can't make the corner count, and the guys in green scramble it clear for a quick counter attack of their own. And after subbing on road running from the Looney Tunes, they find themselves in a promising position. If they score here, it could well be that's all, folks. Oh. oh, what a fucking block! What an absolute Looney Tunes aside, a brilliant last second tackle from Jordan means the score remains 3 0, and a small glimmer of hope remains. <laughs> ah, after the ref's interception, it looks like we're going to have a drop ball instead. And to be honest with you, we don't have much to say about this clip, so we're going to let the action unfold naturally. Boys, what are you playing at? It's a drop ball, it's in play! Yes, Sam, wonderful tackle! Why is Sam the only one paying attention? After completely switching off from the drop ball, Luckily, it's only a free kick they conceded instead, but from this angle, it definitely looked like a penalty. However, from the resulting free kick... Has anyone got any sliding chinnies he can have? Just sat here. Who? Oh, you go. I'm not walking back to me, Well, that was Sting on a cold Sunday morning in the port, and after taking one to the face, Craig needs one thing, and one thing only. Water. Got any water? <laughs> While the search for some magic water starts, it turns out a medical miracle is happening before our very eyes. <laughs> Doesn't even need the magic water. Well, the revival of Craig was quite a sight to behold, but thankfully we can get back on with the game now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. I want to, I want to watch that. Do like. you want to watch that? You got to fucking include that. that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> well. It turns out me sneezing being a highlight might indicate the direction this game has gone in. Nevertheless, here come the D again. Have a dig, Leo! Why are we not shooting? Can this keeper fuck off? Oh, he's just said the line. Why are they not shooting? A frustrated sideline thinking what we're all thinking, as it's off the line this time. However, here come Jackswood once again. Yes, Give it. Oh, my coming, my coming! Liam's airline! At this point, the man needs no introduction, but it's fair to say he was disappointed that Jackswood didn't get a penalty. Basketball aside, however, we're back underway, and a strong tackle from Liam sets the day off on another attack. But can they make this one count? Please. Okay, okay, maybe this one. Surely this keeper can't save everything today. We're not seeing things, but the D have the ball in the back of the Jackswood net, with the Jackswood defender on the end of Adam's prod towards goal. With not long to go though, it could be too little too late, however. Yeah. <laughs> mate, I'll, I'll be I'll fighting your corner for you, mate. Guarantee you the But the main thing is, there is still some time, and you never know, another quick goal could lead to an interesting last 10 minutes. 
Oh, we gave the ball away. Forget that thought. Thankfully, Jason is there at the last second to smash it off the line this time. Meanwhile, the boys have it up the other end. And what they need right now is an injection of pace. Enter Digger. Yes, Digger! <laughs> Snap him. <laughs> you see him just slow it down like he thought for one second he was Sadio Mane. <laughs> well, as a frustrating game comes to a close, Digger's Mane moment has definitely gave the lads something to laugh about at least. But sadly, Another semi for the D just wasn't to be today. But join us next episode as all eyes turn towards that semi, which is still on the horizon, but it's coming ever closer. <laughs> Oh, you just do the yeah, Triple yeah. H in front of the camera, lad. What? Do the Triple H in front of the camera. Let me out of this angle. How the fuck is you? It's time to hold the line. Probably all day.